Paul from the Brockton Public Library. I'm here to welcome you to episode three of the poetry series, Everyone Has a Voice. Everyone Has a Voice was founded by poet Philip Soros, is currently hosted by Ali Brioso, and it features poets from around the state and poets from Brockton and, uh, and Brockton High. Once again, I would like to thank all of our first responders, our, uh, our mayor, our DPW, our police, our fire, our uh, uh, Brockton Emergency Management, uh, the Brockton Schools, uh, the, the, the supermarket uh, workers, the truckers that are getting our food supply to us. Uh, thank you all very much uh, in this time. We really appreciate what you are doing for us. Uh, in the meantime, please sit back, enjoy the poetry as a, as a brief gesture of our gratitude and uh, a little bit of art in, in, in a world that needs it right now. Enjoy the show. Victorian Valentine. My Valentine offered me red roses, smoothed my cheeks with their dew, brushed my lips with their color to gloss them ruby petals. My Valentine cleaned shrimps for gumbo stew, seared spices into pepper flesh, lemon-laced, garlic-glazed, to lick my hungry belly fire-clean true. Scarlet soul food, spicy earthen brew, warms my innards, loosens my tongue, unveils me, like rose petals dropping. And this is called Bear Trapped in the Bathroom. Sometimes I stare at myself in the bathroom mirror. It's long, speckled with dirt and toothpaste splatter, and the golden hinges which hold it on are small and rusty. Today, as the sun bursts in from the window behind, I squint my eyes so that their lashes blockade them, like cross-stitch in one's eyes. Little jagged beams of sunlight break through to alter my figure and magnify my body's hair. I lay down, pretending to hibernate. The tub is my cave. The blue carpet's reflection in the blurred mirror, a lake. How difficult it must be, I think to myself, to catch a fish without a pole and bait. More importantly, if I were a bear, would I wonder what it feels like to be a man? I get down on all fours and slowly crawl towards the mirror. As I get closer, more sunlight seeps through my eyes, making my bearded face even more indistinct until my forehead bumps the cold glass. The water disperses and my eyes open fully and refocus. This must be what happens when a bear sees its own reflection in the water. It doesn't believe itself. My intense need for clarity exposing all of my anxiety as a worried face stares back, wondering what it was looking for to begin with. I don't know exactly what I'm looking for myself. I find exactly what I'm looking for, the need to feel human. Thank you. Joyce Wilson, reading a short poem by Langston Hughes from his book, The Dream Keeper. Poem. I loved my friend. He went away from me. There's nothing more to say. The poem ends soft as it began. I loved my friend. This is Joyce Wilson. I'm going to read a poem from my book, The Need for a Bridge, poems inspired by the Four River Bridge between Quincy and Weymouth in Massachusetts. This one's called The Player, His Crossing Pass. Each day the shipyard horn announced the time and changing shift. The children ran to find their grandfather, who walked up from the yard on Commonwealth and met them open-armed. He worked at Quincy Shipyard for the war and watched designs assembled on the floor, balloon and blossom, into finished drafts of battle. He fitted pipes and lined the shafts. Destroyers, cruisers, warships, carriers were launched before the bridge, where co-workers all cheered as champagne cracked against the sides that slid from berth to sea to meet the tides. But that was part of his second career. He came from Scotland decades earlier to sign with the American Soccer League, who saw he had supply to meet demand. How he moved to make the sweet assist with ambidextrous skill, the crossing pass that Archie Stark would pound into the goal, Consistently, their parts defined the whole. 
Each time he ran from far to middle ground, he drew spectators just to see him play, then coached the college team at MIT until an injured vertebrae, and he moved on. From Clydebank he arrived and made his name, one of the top wingers to play the game, pipe fitter, team player, asbestos in his lung. He died at 69, a man still young. That was in memory of Malcolm Livingston Goldie, my husband's grandfather. Hello, my name is Mesu Fofana, and I will be reading some poems for you, some written by myself and some others by other authors. The first one is by me. It's called The Platitude of Life. Today, it rained. I wished for the drops to soak away my feeling restrained. Not too long ago, it was hot sunny. It made me want to rush outside in a hurry. And tomorrow, I don't know how the weather is going to make me feel. Maybe it'll make my life seem more real. Maybe it'll bring back my zeal. Maybe I'll write a poem, maybe. But I know for sure that tomorrow I'll be home. Thank you. The poem is entitled Demain de l'eau and it's by French author Victor Hugo. Demain, dès l'aube, à l'heure où blanchit la campagne, je partirai. Vois-tu, je sais que tu m'attends. J'irai par la forêt, j'irai par la montagne. Je ne puis demeurer loin de toi plus longtemps. Je marcherai les yeux fixés sur mes pensées, sans rien voir dehors, sans entendre aucun bruit. Seul, inconnu, le dos courbé, la main croisée, triste, et le jour pour moi sera comme la nuit. Je ne regarderai ni l'or du soir qui tombe, ni les voiles au loin descendant vers Arfleur. Et quand j'arriverai, je mettrai sur ta tombe un bouquet de ouvert et de bruyère en fleurs. Merci. Hi. My name is Sarah Robb and I'm a poet. I'd like to read a poem about the town of Santa Fe, New Mexico, where a storm is occurring. We're all living a little bit in a storm right now. And this is about that. It's dedicated to my friend Anne McRae, who also loves the town. Santa Fe. How carefree we are. Debonair is the breeze in this ancestral place of the Kiva. Enwrapped by mountains, a fire with the flowering cacti, the azure of sky and the scent of jasmine. How excited the bees are, buzz buzzing with fury by the stirring of wind in the leaves of the agave, in the roses abloom on the pebbling adobe, in the Hopi serapes displaying their wares. How elated we are, and as spicy as salsa. The scent on our breath is the sweetness of kava. We're pleasuring gringos who are winding our way, laughing and swaying along the Camino. How abrupt is the weather of change with its fray in an umbra of cloud, with its lightning and rain and surprise. So the storm has us dodging and ducking and dashing, escaping or not the piñata of hail. Thanks for listening. I'm Alice Kochimba, the founding director of Calliope Poetry for Community and co-host of Poetic License, a virtual poetry, story, and music event at Falmouth Community TV. And this is a new poem in response to the COVID crisis. It has an epigraph. Italians have embraced the language of music as a measure to communicate with their neighbors and endure the ravages of COVID-19. From the New Yorker, March 19, 2020. And the title 
is an English translation of a line from an opera by Puccini, Nessun Dorma. Watch the stars that tremble with love and with hope. All you need, two wooden spoons and a pan. Though some had a violin, a cello, a flute. Some had arias in their bones. Others couldn't carry a tune. At 6 p.m., everyone went out onto their balconies, even though Italy was dying. Churches packed with caskets. No one remained a stranger. Watch the stars that tremble with love and with hope. Everyone with breath sang to ward off the dark. Hey everybody, it's Jason from Oddball Magazine and uh, I just wanted to um, share another poem for Everyone Has a Voice. Uh, this poem is called uh, Jagged Thought 300. This was my 300th Jagged Thought on oddballmagazine.com. It's called Week to Beast. As I step into my future, I lay bare my past. I once thought that I was evil. I once thought that I was lame. I was ashamed of my name. I was unhinged, insane. I was drugged out. I was tired. I couldn't sleep, but that was the beginning of this recovery story. Let's go back even deeper. I was shy. I was new. It was a new school. I moved to the place I grew up, where later I screwed up. But growing up, I had a few friends, mostly Andy and Ryan and maybe Jim. Played a lot of basketball on my block. I would play till the lights came on and the sun went dark. Loved the game, thought I was good at it. A lonely game of shooting baskets. All through school, I would play after school and on weekends. And my friends who played basketball, they became my best. I mean, I grew up in the time of Larry Bird and Reggie Lewis. We played soccer, sometimes football in the winter. But when the light illuminated my street, and even before the bus took me to school, I'd be out there getting my hands dirty, chasing after every missed shot and letting the mud dance off the spalding ball. One friend ended up going to a different school. Another friend, Colin, he did too. We used to play two on two and run plays, give and goes and fadeaways. Andy had a good baseline shot, but he was a short kid. And when the time came, even though he was the best shot I knew, barely ever beat him one on one. He went to a school whose football team was number one and basketball team's JV play players started at six foot one. So nevertheless, he did something else and I was left alone. I did try out for the team once, but I never played or knew the drills. And even though I had a good shot, I didn't have enough toughness or self-esteem. So I never made it the second day of tryouts. I never made the team. So I started Oddball Magazine, which you were reading. And the reason I'm still breathing is the dream I never stopped dreaming. And maybe I will do more with it, but I'll never be a Celtic. And that is something else entirely. But there's a lot of poets, writers, and musicians out there who inspired me to be this beast, to write like Leatherface, to write from my gut, to say to how it is and not give a fuck. Because maybe I'm not the best at it, but you know what? So what? At least I'm doing something. What have you done? What have they done? So I'll continue to examine me quietly, or not so quietly. I'll keep making something out of this mess of me. But you know what? I'll still be a beast. Writing daily, medicated nightly. <laughs> Thanks very much. That was Jagged Thought 300, uh, Week to Beast. And uh, you can find it at oddballmagazine.com. Thank you, Philip, for everyone has a voice. Thank you for doing this. Um, you know, I really do appreciate what you're doing and giving me the opportunity to read for you uh, and read for uh, the, the people who are still reading the poetry that we're putting out there, because art is for real. My name is Marguerite Bouvard, and this poem is dedicated to Falah Rashid, who lives in Iraq. This world, behind my face, is another face that nobody sees. It carries so many absences. The fear of a child who has crossed the border, her father cutting a barbed wire fence between Syria and Turkey. Falah, his wife, and their baby daughter changing their residence 
for the twelfth time in Iraq, where life turns on the axis of a roulette and borders crop up within other borders, and the cascade of shouts are not intelligible, where we have become fugitive on the streets we once crossed to buy a loaf of bread or to visit a neighbor. Streets that reflected sunlight are now filled with whales, the trees devoid of branches, the doors clanging in the wind while walls buckle. This shattered world can only be pieced back together with the words brother, sister, friend. My name is Marguerite Bouvard, and I'm going to read a poem about a wonderful man, Liu Xiaobu. Returning from his studies at Columbia University because he loved his country, he led the 1989 Tiananmen Square Democracy Movement and cajoled the students to retreat, to stay alive, when the army opened fire then hauled him off to prison, courage continually blossoming in his heart. For this was just the beginning of his life's work and imprisonment. Yet there was a land within him where justice reigned. In 2008, he was arrested yet again for his efforts on behalf of the rule of law and an end to censorship. He remained incarcerated, separated from a wife he cherished, for whom he wrote poems. When he won the Nobel Prize for his endless struggles on behalf of democracy, where he warned an enemy mentality can destroy a society's tolerance and humanity, at a time when populism flourished in the West and fake news was rampant in our country, and the word we crumbled beneath the battles between us and them, when hatred defaced mosques and Jewish cemeteries were defiled, and in a Kansas bar, an engineer, Srinivas Kuchibatla, was confronted with angry slurs and shot to death. While Liu Xiaobu was suffering from liver cancer, insisting he did not see his prison guards as enemies, even though he was not allowed to leave for proper medical care. For in the darkness of his confinement, his soul was illuminated. After he died, his lessons and his life efforts remain timeless, that there is neither east or west, that we all need to honor compromise and moderation, the oneness of our humanity. Good evening. This is K-Mac coming to you live with some of my poetry. The first one is called The Dance. I watched you blow smoke, inhaling and exhaling through the curtain. I watched you walk to the beat of your own drum, painting the world with the tip of your fingers. You wanted it to be real. You wanted me to be real. Brought me sunflowers and danced with me. Oh, how you danced with me holding me close to your African beat. Your smooth chocolate skin and jet black hair made me feel the heat in the heart of the Ghanaian earth. So real, so real, so real, I wanted to be real and sing. And that's why I poured out my heart to you Gave myself to you without a stop sign, without a yield. We went full speed ahead, 
Like, yeah, like we were on a highway. But why this sudden darkness? The wind of the trees. Snowflakes lament this painful darkness as your brown eyes turn cold like Jack Frost. Why the sudden need to walk away like we never crossed the desert together? Like we didn't make heat enough to melt stars together? You let locks come between us, old oh, dusty, rusty nails of past relationships. And I realized too late that you didn't walk away. You were never there. Thank you. I'm coming to you live with a track called Brockton State of Mind. So be nice, y'all. <laughs> Straight out of Brockton, east side to rap. Here I come, so get ready to clap. Go ahead, y'all. To the beat, y'all. The beat drops deep as sun does a sunflower. Crawling woman has no powers. Beyond the walls of stories, life is defined. I think of talking when I'm in a Brockton state of mind. Go ahead, y'all. To the beat, y'all. Hope these words chop like a shot, chop like a shot through your ear box. Go ahead, y'all. To the beat, y'all. In the Brockton state of mind, you gotta love it, though. I'm still gonna speak, so let it flow. Go ahead, y'all. To the beat, y'all. Oh, you can't take the sunlight. You can't take the soil. I would have tried whispering, but you ain't ready for these spoils. Cause I'm rapping to the knees, I'm rapping to the knees. Gonna plant your seeds, gonna plant your seeds. Gonna make you rise from your knees. Gonna make you rise from your knees. Go ahead, y'all. To the beat, y'all. Go ahead, y'all. To the beat, y'all. Yeah, in the Brockton state of mind. Working through this COVID-9. I lay low trying to fight this disease. Just don't call me if you please. Go ahead, y'all. To the beat, y'all. Go ahead, y'all. To the beat, y'all. When I was young, I imagined Eiffel Towers. I was kicking it there at all types of hours. I ain't never thought I would spring my flowers. Ain't a soul alive to get in without a shower. Go ahead, y'all. To the beat, y'all. When I'm rapping to your knees, rapping to your knees. Gonna bring you to, bring you to your knees. I'm gonna bring you to, bring you to your knees. Go ahead, y'all. To the beat, y'all. Go ahead, y'all. To the beat, y'all. Yeah, this is K-Max State of Mind, y'all. Brockton Heights State of Mind, y'all. Now it's time to finish the roll call. Now it's time to finish the roll call. I'm rapping to the needs, rapping to your knees. Gonna lay down the seeds, lay down the seeds. Cause I'm rapping to your needs, rapping to your knees. Gonna lay down the seeds, lay down the seeds. So stop and get up from your knees. So stop. Get up from your knees. Thank you. Hi, I'm Fred Marchant, and I'm going to read a poem as part of the ongoing Everybody Has a Voice series. In these trying times, I think it is important to remember some of the fundamental human virtues, 
what we're capable of on the good side. This poem is about that. It's called First Song Again. Trust all the wood you stand on. Become an ally of the grain. Bend in the wind. Trust even the high, precarious places, the steeples and windy overhangs that teach you everything. Trust, too, the rose tint of late afternoon sifting down through a lofted blue heron wing. Trust above all the imminent return of the small but persistent impulse to sing. Thank you. Exit Pandemic by Catherine DeMarca. Yesterday, I walked out of the present and into the past. I spent a quiet hour in a lost century. I slipped in and breathed in damp earth and cool air and walked upon the grounds of a country estate. All around, signs of early spring. An open rolling lawn meets the stream. Robins peck at stubs of grass and compete with long-necked geese back from winter travel. A white magnolia tree beckons with delicate blossoms, still sparsely in bloom. A sudden burst of light brightens the overcast sky. I step its sneakers along the dirt path to the manor, standing apart, serene. I keep in my sweatshirt and jeans. But no one is here demanding my departure. It's just me, the 21st century interloper, escaping infinite unease. Wondering how this magic found me. Wondering how long this magic lasts. The tree that didn't know it was a fruit tree. The tree that didn't know it was a fruit tree grew up in a grove of evergreens, shy about the shaping of its leaves, unneedle-like, and shocked to see them fall in that first season and to stand denuded, open to the winter wind surrounded by pines and firs, secure and durable, cloaked in close green with silver underneath. Flush in the spring, astonished by its budding, the new growth answers with a brighter shade the somber questions coloring its neighbors. Then, taken unawares by blossoming and gaping at its petals pink and white, it keeps a secret in the mystery of pollen, to be visited by bees who find their way to it unerringly to share that secret in a distant place. It marvels as a different change ensues from pollinated blossom into fruit, which swells and ripens through to harvest time. What is this crop that bumps against the carpet of crackling brown and settles down upon the layered needles of the forest floor. It doesn't understand the rot that follows, the role that beauty plays, the ripening into a sweetness, why they had to die to make way for new life. Among its neighbors, alien and ill-equipped to know its mission while it thinks itself alone, it stands as animals approach and nibble at its gifts to leave the bitten cores behind. Ahead, the sight of future orchards. Mm -hmm.